So thanks a lot for uh, taking the time out to uh, talk to me, guys, about Chronoblade. Pretty, uh, pretty exciting stuff. I've been ha having a pretty serious play session of the game over the past few days. I've put in quite a few hours actually, and uh, been really enjoying the the combat and the fluidity of it and the depth and everything like that. So uh, that brings me to my first question, I guess. Why the decision to uh, host it on Facebook? Well, uh, Facebook is a, is a good place for us to find a lot of users across you know, the usual console lines. Uh, it's a way for us to, 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 uh, to get it in people's hands easily and quickly, faster and easier than you know, downloading a, and something, which is part of the reason why we made it work through Flash, too. Uh, it seems like a pretty impressive game for Flash, based, based on what I've seen in the past, basically. It's like... Uh, the combat and the graphical engine are both very, uh, you know, very impressive for that sort of thing. Uh, it seems like you're really showing off the power of the browsers as well. <laughs> yeah, we were sort of surprised that it's working at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was a while there where <laughs> it didn't look so pretty. Um, but it's actually, it's coming together really well and it's, it's running pretty well on some lower end PCs, which is really exciting and it should just get better and better. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I'm sort of on a mid-range PC, and I don't really notice any frame rate issues or anything like that, even when I'm recording. So uh, it doesn't seem too intensive on system specs. Do you have an idea of like the uh, the lowest sort of end PC it would run on? Do you remember Alex? I forget the exact specs. So this is Alex, but you know, roughly, you know, any computer that was, let's say, within the past four or five years, yep. Yep. you shouldn't be able to handle it. Um, you don't need a dedicated graphics card. Yep. Um, net netbooks, we you know definitely can't handle it. Um, but certainly you don't need a high PC at all to play it. All right, so some lap laptops shouldn't really have problems with it then? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I definitely. mean, uh, we, we definitely test on a range of laptops. I use a laptop myself. So, yes, the short answer is yes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely part of our, our mandate is we don't, we don't want to, you know, make something that's successful on the browser but, but then have people have a, a higher-end PC required to, to actually get the most out of it. And like Jordan said, I mean, we're, we're still in development and uh, in closed beta, so we're going to continue to optimize, and hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll really get down to some even lower, low-spec machines. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense, because you are on Facebook, and having the game be more accessible wouldn't make more sense if it wasn't very accessible for people playing on that system. Uh, exactly. It, yeah, it seems to allow a lot of, like, integration, a lot of interaction and things like that. So, um... That brings me on to another thing I wanted to touch on was uh, what are your guys' plans for future player versus player interaction? I saw on the main side it says uh, real-time multiplayer gameplay with co-op and PvP. Uh, the current implementation of that seems to be the score-based single-player tournament mode. Uh, how are you looking to increase upon that in the future? Well, we've got sort of three tiers that we're working on. The first one is just the, the, the tournament mode and competitive uh, and game and play of that nature. And then the next round is asynchronous PvP and co-op where um, we're experimenting with some ideas where you would play with people but not necessarily at the same time. And then hopefully as soon as possible we'll be moving into the real goods which is real-time PvP and real-time co-op with up to four players. Yeah, and we've actually, we've, we've been... Uh... We've been sort of planning that all along, and we actually have it working sort of um, here. But uh, but we yeah. want to make sure that it works as well as possible over the networks before we roll that out, so that no one gets you know yeah. hosed by their bad connection or what have you. Because obviously, any lack in in frame rate or responsiveness on yeah. PvP would make people yeah. rage quit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, that'd be pretty impressive if you could get some sort of like real-time PvP going, because I've seen like some sort of player interactive sort of games on Facebook and things like that with you know poker, but they're all they're all turn-based. So I can see why you're taking the step into uh, you said asynchronous uh, like co-op or PvP. So you mentioned that you're in closed beta, and like it seems like it's pretty tricky to get a key unless you know someone who can give you a key. <laughs> but do you have a full like rough a rough time for a full release or an open beta or anything like that? People can look forward to. Uh, we don't have a set deadline yet. You know, we're you know continuously optimizing the game um, to make it as good as possible. But I, I would say you know we're aiming to release it for release later this spring, uh, but no set date yet. Yeah, I mean, basically we we're really trying to focus on quality and and get it to as good a level as we can with with within the closed beta, getting the feedback that we can from the the users that that we do allow in, and and really getting it tuned as well as possible. As you as you saw, like there's a lot of potential there, but it's still pretty raw, and it's you know there's not enough variety yet, and there's there's yeah. uh, there's there's something there, but it needs more. 
Yeah, I can sort of tell from the content that's hinted at in the game system at the moment that it looks sort of like you're halfway there in terms of getting that content out. Like two of the available five or something characters that look like you're aiming for. Well, the the, the characters are going to keep trickling out as we as we develop them. Um, yeah. They probably will not. We probably won't have all of our intended characters for the first uh, open beta or open release, I guess. Yeah. Um, the the two that we're, we've got now are, are probably going to the two that we'll have for that first release. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's just one of those things of not sort of you know dividing our our focus and making sure that that the characters that we do have are are as you know as cool and unique as possible. Yeah. So I, that sort of hints at one other thing I wanted to ask is when you do reach that full release point, uh, what were your plans like? How far did you want to extend the gameplay? Like you could. I can, you could do like additional tournament game modes, things like that, more storyline missions, more gear and skills. What sort of things were you planning for, you know, like the long-term future, making the game uh, really ha have a reason for people to stick around? The yes, long the long-term. <laughs> the yeah. long-term. Uh, well, so all, all of the things you mentioned are definitely, you know, the things that we're focused on for, for going live initially. But, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's one of those things where where we, we know that we want to put in um, you know more content uh, after live as quickly as, as possible. Um, you know, obviously while keeping the same level of, of quality that we have. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's lots of ways that we want to expand for sure. Oh, great stuff. It seems like a solid base to be able to build upon, since you know you have the loot based system in there and the yep. potential for extra skill trees and things like that. So uh, yep. yeah, good good base to build off there. Yeah, the, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like I said, those are, those are definitely uh, some of the ways that we're looking at expanding for sure. Uh, you know, more loot, more skills, more characters, more environments. Uh, you know, more chapters, more worlds. Yeah, more worlds. Cool. Cool. And one one of the cool things about this being an online game is that we can really kind of get information from the community about what sorts of things they're interested in, what the, what they're enjoying playing, and expand in those directions too. We want to make it a bigger game, but uh, we'll definitely be focusing on the bits that people find uh, engaging. Yep. Yeah, I've been looking at the forums, and uh, I can already tell that you guys are very, you know, very reactive to community feedback and things like that. I've posted a few things, and you know, within a couple of hours, there's usually some sort of response, or uh, you know, you guys are sharing some plans you have to develop on those ideas, and you know, next closed beta and things like that. So it's really good to see from this sort of game. Yeah, and that 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 goes back to the the Facebook decision is is you know we really are focused on having a community and getting that feedback and and you know making whatever pivots we need to in uh, in the development plan so yeah it all kind of fits together hopefully <laughs> all right so um one thing I want to ask about the skill tree I sort of was talking about that earlier uh, you've it's sort of like you know that torchlight Diablo 2 style skill tree uh, but I've noticed Diablo that two, what's that <laughs> <laughs> So um, instead of like the one point to progress and unlock, you know, the next tier of things, uh, it seems like you have to max out certain skills to unlock ones further down the tree. I'm a big fan of like limitation as a game mechanic for dr driving creativity in these sorts of games where you're coming up with builds and things like that. Uh, but it feels like that's somewhat stifling. What's the like balanced decision or the design goal behind having you max out a skill before you can progress on? Well, it's 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 really just to keep people from just sort of rushing to the bottom of the tree and and getting the the, the sort of biggest most bang for the buck skills straight away. Um, we we still definitely are are focused on there being a lot of breadth and a lot of ways that people can can build uh, you know different different uh, sort of versions of each of each of the characters, um, and that's something that that we're definitely um, you know is, is part of our focus. Uh, during the, the closed beta is really looking into that and, and figuring out what those viable builds are and, and you know, tr trying to sort of maximize how many there are and how different they are. So um, it looks like you've got two skill trees for each character at the moment. Uh, in the future, yeah. it sounds like you're planning three, is that right, for each character? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think at least three. At least three. At least three. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any teasers for upcoming skill trees, what the theme of them will be? Uh, well, so we, we, you know, honestly, that's something that we kind of um, put on the back burner because, yep, like I said, we really wanted to keep the focus. But we, we definitely had some ideas, but we're sort of not stuck on them. And, and again, like Jordan was saying before, we really want to sort of find out from the community what they're interested in, rather than than sticking with our ideas that might no longer be valid. 
yeah, fair enough, fair enough, guys. Um, so one other thing I wanted to talk about was microtransactions. Uh, so I expect in like a free-to-play game or especially Facebook games, they have some elements of pay-to-win that seems to, you know, it's, it's pretty much the norm now. Uh, but there's obviously varying degrees of this from like minor convenience and time-saving purchases uh, to like full-blown pay-to-progress pay, pay systems. So what's your design philosophy behind your microtransaction system? And what are you looking to offer players who are willing to crack out the credit card? Well... I'll, I'll I'll jump on that grenade. Um, so <laughs> so so basically, um, you know, we're we're really super focused on a, a hardcore mentality as far as the way that the game monetizes, where it's it's really not intended to be pay to win at all. Um, you know, I mean, obviously we want to make money um, uh, because you know we we want to keep the company solvent and get paid and things like that. You keep making but, the game. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're sort of not going to do that at the expense of, of the gameplay. So you know, there's there's enough skill in the game that that you can you can grind through the game and and just you know develop really good skills and you know probably not not pay a lot. Um, you know, we prefer that people did pay. So we we have good reasons to do it um, rather than sort of forcing them into gameplay in in ways that that you know feel artificial and and uh, and unpleasant. Um, but you know, I don't I don't think that we're anywhere near uh, most. Facebook games or you know any microtransaction games in terms of, of really sort of demanding the, the, the user give us money <laughs> yeah. at, at every turn. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you know Farmville or anything where you have to you have to start paying to be able to develop any further. From what I can see, that's in the game already. Like it's quite easy to get gold just by playing more. Though you you could buy it if you wanted that extra convenience and things like that. So it seems it seems like I can tell that you guys are going towards that. Uh, and with the inclusion of PvP and things like that in the future, I guess you could uh, do more cosmetic stuff as well if you wanted to. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that, that we're looking at adding as well as as a as a future system is is. Uh... You know more customizations of the character and things like that because that's that's just fun stuff that people enjoy that doesn't really affect gameplay. So it seems like it's it's pretty safe stuff to do. And as you said, as we get into real PvP and more competitive modes, which is a major element in a hardcore game, we have to be especially careful about you know what advantages we give to people who are are willing to pay for them. Yep. Uh, and we we really are are paying close attention to that. Yeah, for sure. Regarding it with shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> That seems like a pretty solid approach, especially since it is, you know, it's an accessible game, but uh, with the amount of depth that I can see it in already, it, it, I can see it having that hardcore appeal, and you don't really want to drive away that player base with pay to progress and things like that. So that, yep. seem, that seems pretty solid, guys. Uh, I, I, that's the, it for my main questions, but I wanted to uh, see if you guys had any tips for gameplay for, you know, doing well in Chrono Blade that uh, might help us out, some of the people who are just getting into the game. So that's interesting. That's one of the things that, that we kind of, I think, uh, enjoy about the game and, and see as, as, a, as a good sort of, you know, mark of its potential is that everybody here plays differently. So I'm sure that Jordan's steps will be completely different from mine and mine will apply to his game, you know, absolutely uselessly <laughs> because we, we have such different styles. Um, so I don't know. What do you, what do you got? Well, uh, I mean, we can we can, I can run down sort of the mentality of each of the trees real quick if you want, and uh, yeah, and you that'd can be cool. That which will, yeah. Um, in uh, in Arox trees, he uh, the Stonebreaker is definitely more focused on big hits and lowering armor so that you can do more damage with 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 larger attacks. Um, he's got a couple of moves that do significantly more damage in spe uh, in special instances, which I'm not sure is very well uh, communicated right now. Blindside does more damage if it hit, hits guys that are uh, attacking or being hit reacted. So if they're unsteady, he'll do more damage to them with Blindside. And then um, Sucker Punch, he does more damage against enemies that uh, have not been hurt yet. So he's got sort of situational stuff that works better in different instances. And then in Berserker, it's all status effects and uh, hitting lots of guys at once and trying to build into a crit tree. Um, for Lofi, her shadow tree is definitely more player-based AOE and uh, and uh, melee enhancing stuff, and her uh, her summoner tree is definitely more CC and ranged AOE stuff. So it's kind of depends on how you want to play. If you want to get up on them and 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 be in the middle of the fray and see crazy numbers for Lofi, then uh, then shadow's the one for you. And if you want to play the CC game and and deck people with giant rocks from far away, then uh, summoning <laughs> is. What's your favorite way to play, Alex? Um, I mean, I personally like Lofi over Orok. Um, 
I mean, that's that's my play style. I like I like having the speed, I mean, agility over I guess the power. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I think it depends on what your play style is. It depends on my mood too. Um, sometimes you want to do those, you know, something speedy, something large, sort of um, comedic sort of things. But um, I, I think overall, as as Steve said, there's just you know, many different styles that kind of suit each person. Uh, and also, it also maybe depends on your mood, right? So I don't I don't think there's like one answer. Yeah. To... <laughs> what about what about your Steve? What's your favorite play style or build? So uh, I, I tend to play Auroch, and I tend to spec into a bunch of uh, damage dealing traits. So I, I stack a bunch of passives that, that do damage, because I like to see lots of numbers <laughs> floating over people's heads and, and complete mayhem. Um, so yeah, it's, it's you know, <laughs> like I said, it's pretty different player to player. Uh, that's that's, that's my, my way to do it. What about yours, Jordan? What's your favorite way to play? Uh, I like Stonebreaker. Yeah. Stonebreaker is my favorite, um, but a close second is the Shadow Tree with Lofi. She's got a couple of uh, end game moves that do more damage based on how many status effects the guys she hits uh-huh. have on them. So uh, it's kind of a fun yeah. mini game of stacking stuff up on them and then hitting Shatter and just watching everything explode. So uh, any other, any other tips, guys? Any other pro tips? Uh, there is there is such a thing as time block, and it's hard to pull off. Um, but when you do, it does uh, an AOE damage around you. It doesn't take any energy. Ah, oh, so I didn't even know anything about that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bonus. So you uh, time time that on the attack correctly, and it'll release an AOE around you. Yeah. Yep. yep. Oh, awesome! I'll have to practice that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's it for now, guys. Excellent. Thanks for having having me on and talking to me about the game. Oh, man, that was really enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Sure. <laughs> uh, thanks for uh, thanks for you know playing and making the videos. And if you have any other questions, you know uh, just just let me know. I'll be sure to hit you guys up. I uh, have plenty more content planned for the game. Actually, when a game grabs me like that, I tend to uh, like to make a lot of guides and things like that on it. So <laughs> it's been pretty exciting stuff. Anyway, thanks cool. for, thanks a lot, guys. See you later. That's great. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Great. Cheers.